much for joining us today. And thank you to those that will be watching or listening at home uh, from the recording as well. So uh, today's topic is how do I manage that? Seven strategies to make you PBL like a boss. And you know, funny thing today, I just uh, came across, uh, I think it was on Facebook, that today is National Bosses Day. So there you go. So a great, uh, great tie into that. But really, we're going to be looking at strategies, strategies you can use in your classroom to make PBL happen. Because we know project-based learning, and obviously if you're on this webinar, you're interested in it, you're doing it, you want to learn more. Uh, but it's, it's overwhelming. There's, there's so much to consider. And let's take a look at what are those logistics, those management challenges that we can try to overcome to make this work for you in your classroom. So with that, uh, just real quick to see who's on the line tonight. Uh, what is your role, grade, subject? Why is this important to you? And what do you hope to get out of this session? So you see a poll uh, box there. Go ahead and kind of let us know uh, who's on the line. and. Type in the chat box there about what, why is this important to you and or what do you hope to get out of this, uh, this session. Thanks. Well, great. Keep those responses coming in. Looks like we have a, a good uh, maybe upper uh, elementary, middle school and some you know, K-12 or possibly administrators out there. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Annette, thanks for your comment there. Uh, required to use PBL. So, you know, we're all in this together. And that's, you know, the beauty of webinars and networking is, is finding out what are other people doing and how can we learn from each other. So thank you so much for sharing that. And that uh, chat box is open, so feel free to uh, jot down any questions or ideas that you have throughout this, uh, the time we're here together. So let's go ahead and get started today. And we're going to really focus on three things. Uh, how do you create those teams? So you've got this great project-based learning idea uh, that you want your students to go through, but you need to figure out how do you manage that? How do you put the, the students in the best or most successful teams? And then how do you establish those norms and those routines in your class as you're going through this project-based learning experience? And then also strategies to help you support team and individual management. So let's dive in. Creating teams. Well, I uh, pulled this quote from one of our principal investigators at the Van Andel Institute uh, for research, and I just I thought it was so, it was so profound, and we know that as educators how important collaboration is. Uh, there, will be, there will never be another groundbreaking scientific discovery by a single individual. You know, you think of things like uh, the International Space Station, you know, 16 countries working together on different parts of that uh, space station, and putting that together, that was put together in space. That wouldn't have happened without collaboration. So how do we get our students into those very successful interdependent teams? Well, uh, before we jump into that, I, I found this uh, meme, and I thought this <laughs> spoke very eloquently to what we've all experienced, whether we're in the group or we're a teacher and we have students in a group, that this happens, right? This is reality. We have one person that does all the work. We have a student that doesn't know what's going on. Uh, one person says that they're going to help, but they don't. And then one person that starts uh, the project you know, with the group, and then they're gone. They're absent. You know, what do you do about that? And then they show up you know, near the end. So I'm going to give you a few strategies to help you know, work through some of those logistical challenges. And the first is you creating those teams, you know, keeping those teams uh, so that they're accountable and responsible you know, for, for the work that they need to do. So I, I read a book uh, a couple months ago. It's called Group Work That Works. And I was really interested in collaborative learning and collaborative structures. And one of the chapters of this book by Paul Vermette and Cynthia Klein focused on what, is, what does the research say the best way to uh, to create your, your collaborative team. And now I had created teams you know, in many different ways, at random, let them choose. But for uh, your most robust collaborative experiences, which is what you want in project-based learning, your team should be small, two to four students. And they need to be diverse, and diverse in their strengths, their interests, their experiences, culturally, gender, you know, racial. They should have all those diversities within them. And they should be long-term, right? So 
meaning that they should be more than a, a week. So one to two to three week type of experiences, which is what project-based learning is. Now, granted, that's not going to happen overnight. You need to know your students, right? You need to know their interests, and you get to know them on that level to be able to put them in those most successful groupings. And the last uh, uh, strategy or recommendation that this book brought up was that they really should be teacher initiated, if possible. Now, I know I, I a lot of times did random groupings and you know with popsicle sticks or did a randomizer on the computer or I let the students pick. But if we really want the desired outcome, we really need to account for uh, that diversity piece. And that's not going to happen uh, organically. Typically, that's not. I mean, the, your students are going to work with typically the same people, their friends, which could get good results. But what happens to those other, other students that maybe don't have those connections in class? So really thinking about building those teams um, to make them small, diverse, and long-term. Well, here's a strategy for doing that. Um, and it's actually a great real-world uh, practical strategy is you want to give your students choice. So if, you have to, if you're building the team and you're not quite sure where to put the students, you need to really understand their interests or their strengths, a great way to do this is have them apply for roles. So if you have a project and you've identified the roles, and for example, you can see in that um, team role application form on the screen, maybe one of the roles is a research consultant, there's a project manager, there's a tech director, there's a journalism specialist. Well, give a brief description of those roles to your students and let them choose their top two roles and have them describe why are they, uh, why should they be considered for those roles? And bringing that real world um, connection to them and having them you know, advocate for themselves and show you kind of the things that they're interested in. And then you can gather that data and put them into the teams according to their interests and the roles that they'd like to do. Uh, now you could do that also you know, with the Google form, you could do that with paper pencil, you could have the students apply for the roles uh, doing a video, maybe a flip grid. Uh, or maybe something you use maybe in Seesaw or something where they are, they're applying with a, a video application. But it's a real quick, uh, easy way for your students to tell you what they'd like to do in that group and then you can use that information to build your team. So that was one strategy to help create your team. Um, how do you create teams in your classroom? What are some ideas you use to, to build these collaborative structures in your class? I'll give you a minute or so to type in the chat box. Love to hear what you have to say. Uh, thank you, Nicole and, and Christy, for those suggestions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it looks like you're really trying to you know, build in that diversity to having you know, students helping, helping each other and being intentional about those, uh, those creation of those teams. And again, I know it's a, it's a work up front to, to build those teams, but if these are long-term projects, it's sustained inquiry you're doing, these, these project-based learning units, you're going to have these teams that are going to be throughout, you know, one, two, three, possibly four, or maybe the whole school year. Um, so it's not as if you're having to create these, these teams all the time. I'll let you keep uh, answering that question. Love to hear your ideas and your strategies there. We're going to move on to the second uh, area of focus for today on our agenda, which was establishing those norms and routines. Uh, now, we, we all have those norms, those expectations for in our classroom and we, we start off and we work with those with our students right off, off you know, the get-go and those routines, those daily procedures that we do to make our class function the, the way that we're in, intended to. But let's really focus on those norms and routines that we use for project-based learning, in particular that collaboration, you know, those working in those, those robust, diverse groups. And I, I pulled this, um, this definition or quote from the Buck Institute for Education, who is a leading you know, theorist on you know, project-based learning. But norms are those agreed upon rules that build productive, self-driven, and a respectful culture. So what do those look like in those collaborative settings? And, and how do we do that? How do we establish those norms? Well, before we go into specific strategies, here's just a kind of a workflow of uh, a suggestion to help do that. So establishing those norms or those rules is one way to do that is to start off with a low stakes collaborative activity. You know, something that's pretty quick, it's easy, 
uh, maybe it's an entry event into a project and they're launching the project where they're really trying to feel it out, getting engaged. But then from that activity, have the students uh, identify what are the characteristics of collaboration? What do we need to do to collaborate effectively? And craft those norms together. And as you can see, and we have a couple of poster examples up there of norms, you could put those norms up in your classroom and refer to them frequently and use those, that list of norms or those rules or expectations uh, to create collaboration rubrics for your students and stressing that how they work together collaboratively and learning collaboration skills and techniques is just as important as the content that, that you need to teach or they need to learn. So how do we do that? How can we craft norms with our students? Well, one way to do that is through those low stakes act an activity. And for example here, a great way to do that is through engineering. It's very engaging, it's hands-on, and it's a great way to introduce project-based learning with your students. Uh, whether it's within that project itself or something you do before you start a you know, project-based learning unit. And so I, I pulled an example from one of our projects uh, called What's in Your Water, where the students are investigating water quality and the activity is, what are you going to do about it? And they are challenged with uh, taking a plastic container, and they fill it with water, and they have to create a divider with those materials listed. Now, I know you can't see those maybe very well, but we have this resource for you down below. Uh, and they have to use those materials to build a divider that will separate um, one side of the, that tank of water from the other so that when food coloring or the pollution is put in the one side, it blocks, that divider blocks that food coloring or pollution from seeping to the other for at least two minutes. So that's their challenge. They have to work together uh, on that, and it's a, you know, something that can be done in, in one lesson. And then after they do that, the students then identify what are the, the things that they needed to be successful to work together to, to meet that challenge. Another quick and easy challenge, engineering challenge, is the spaghetti challenge. And I, uh, it's all over the internet. Uh, it's been featured in TED Talks on design thinking. But give the students some uh, 20 uncooked pasta noodles, a large marshmallow, some tape and string and scissors, and challenge them to build the tallest tower that can support a large marshmallow. Give them about 20, 30 minutes to design, build, test, iterate. Uh, and to try to meet that challenge. Again, asking them these two questions. What made your team successful? What were those characteristics that allowed you to be successful in this challenge? But what were those challenges? What were those roadblocks? What are things that, that maybe we could talk about and figure out? And using that information to then craft those norms or those rules uh, when working in a collaborative group. And here's an example. Um, this is strategy three. You can use those norms to create collaboration rubrics. So if you notice on the left, it should be, I, the I's not showing up, but that should all be I. You know, I take responsibility. I help my team. I respect others. And on the right, it is about how they function as a group. So again, based on, you know, example norms that you might have in your class. This is how we do things. And then have the students constantly, you know, frequently refer to that, check themselves on that, reflect on that. How are they doing that? Again, emphasizing that this collaboration is as important as the content that they're learning throughout that, uh, that project. So we looked at norms and a couple of strategies for um, establishing norms and using norms with your students in a collaborative project-based learning environment. Let's like, take a look at routine. Now, routine, you know, as teachers, we have a ton of routines, procedures for how we, we go about our daily uh, lessons, our instruction. And routines can really be categorized in four different buckets. We have uh, classroom management routines, uh, which could be how you, you know, ask to go to the bathroom or sharpen your pencil or walk down the hallway or line up. Uh, they could be instructional. Uh, routines, which are the strategies or the tools we use uh, during instruction, which could be uh, accessing prior knowledge, uh, giving secondary knowledge, you know, that content that you're delivering or having the students discover. Uh, what are the feedback strategies that you use? What are the assessment, formative and summative assessment strategies, routines that you use? 
uh, throughout your, your lesson. Uh, collaborative routines are those strategies for collaboration, right? How are they working together? What are those activities that you do, uh, strategies that you use to help the students collaborate? And what are those thinking strategies, those creative and critical thinking, those problem-solving strategies or routines that you use throughout your instruction? So if we look at some strategies here, let's kind of um, tackle each of those buckets. So classroom management, you know, we all have, again, a lot of different strategies we use for that. But really, if we're looking at PBL, one powerful strategy um, in a PBL or collaborative uh, culture environment is doing morning meetings. Um, I did in my classroom, I, was, I, did sec I taught secondary, I, did it, I called them what's up. Um, now, granted, we didn't sit in a circle, although I wish I would have, um, but we would just find it, take five minutes and just find out what was going on, you know, what's, uh, what's going on in, in the students' lives. And maybe you tie in the content there, you know, what are some challenges you're having with, you know, the project that you're doing, or, you know, create a more, like, a, almost like a restorative circle type of environment. Maybe you play a game, you know, maybe you have a rock, scissors, um, rock paper, scissors tournament or, or something just to to connect for that, that few minutes. And you know, you're building that connection, that rapport. Maybe you're getting a little bit of the content um, out there and answering some questions, but really kind of priming that pump for, for their day. Uh, another strategy, as if we call, which would be an instructional strategy for feedback, is uh, it's called the ABC strategy. And we know that feedback needs to be timely and actionable. You know, the students need to be able to take that feedback and do something with it. And uh, one of the projects that we do with students is called the Dirty Truth, and they create commercials supporting either the colonization of Mars or the uh, preservation of Earth's resources. And they present this at a fundraiser, and they're asking for support for these two different causes. Well, as the students are creating their scripts, um, and writing them and reviewing them and iterating on them, you know, we're walking around and, you know, checking in on the different groups. But it's hard to sit down and spend 20 minutes a group to give feedback. So we need something that's more focused, more, uh, it's actionable, it's focused, it's to the point, and it helps save time. So using something like ABC, where you agree upon or you agree with something, you ask them to build upon something, and you challenge them to do something. So for example, in their script, I might say, well, I, I agree with the um, three reasons that you um, suggested why we should support colonization of Mars. I would build upon um, why you think that uh, colonization of Mars is going to be ac accessible for people in, in the next 20 years. And I would challenge you to take that argument further and add a fourth reason, you know, something like that that gives them that next step. So that's a great way to, to give feedback very quickly, precisely, and they can take action on it. Uh, another strategy for establishing routines is in your collaborative team, teaching them um, how they work together and how they communicate together to get things done by having them create meeting agendas. Now maybe this is not for every time that they meet, maybe this is once a week they do this, but what is it that they need to accomplish? Maybe it's that day or for that week, but showing them um, different examples of agendas. Maybe you have agendas uh, on your board that you use and showing them, I use this not only to help you so you know kind of where we're at, but it's also something that helps me you know, as a teacher so I know I'm, I'm hitting the things that, that I need to hit for today. Uh, so try uh, you know, showing them examples of agenda. And a good construct for agendas is typically they start with a why, you know, what's the purpose, what does it look like, and how are we going to do it. So the why, what, how it might be a good construct to start off with your students. Another uh, routine strategy, and these are thinking strategies uh, we use in our project-based learning a lot, is the I see, I think, I wonder. And this is great. You could do this in your entry event in how you launch your project. Maybe you have a video or a gallery walk and you have maybe you have different fossils around the room or different 
pictures from natural disasters, whatever it is that they're, they're going to be studying, researching, and creating this project uh, product on. And they go around with sticky notes. I, I see this, I think this, and I wonder, I have a question, and have them put them out um, during that gallery walk. This is also a great strategy to use when they're giving each other feedback in, within their groups or between groups. Um, I see, you know, focusing on something, you know, positive, what do they think about that, and, you know, a question they have for their group to help drive that um, feedback forward. Okay, so talked about some ways to establish some norms in your collaborative, you know, PBL groups and some routine strategies to use as well. What are some norms? Um, or routines that you use in your classroom to help support PBL. I'll leave the chat box open, so feel free to add that uh, there. I know that, you know, as teachers, again, we use so many of these, you know, routine strategies, our daily, you know, tools that we use to, um, you know, to support our classroom and the culture that we're, we're trying to, to create for our students. Uh, so hopefully you found one or two that um, you might want to try out or use, but please feel free to add some additional ones that, as you think and uh, as we're going through that uh, we might want to share with the group. Okay, so the last area here that we want to look at is how do we turn our students into project managers? Because there's only one of us and you may have 30 kids or maybe 150 kids, you know, throughout the year that, that you need to get through this process and teaching them how to project manage is a great real world life skill. So how do we do that? What is um, a strategy that you can use uh, in your classroom right away? Well, one way to do that is to really model project management in different contexts and help the students realize that even outside of work there are projects that they're going to be doing in their life, you know, for example, planning a wedding, uh, planning a birthday party, a retirement party, any sort of event requires project management to some level. I mean, you have a lot of things that you need to organize to make those successful. And then bringing it back into that, you know, the profession and realizing that this is a, a life skill. Uh, and allowing students control in that process so they become their own project managers, both individually, but then also as a group. Allow students to track their own progress and growth, and use invitational language. And really what that means is turning the have to to want to. So they have their project or their product that they um, are going to be creating or designing, and they're going to be sharing with an authentic audience uh, at the end of the experience. But are there milestones throughout the way that they could have choice in? that they could decide how they want to get that done. So thinking about that as you're exploring project management with your students. So here are some strategies. Now, I know that the webinar said seven strategies, but Blue Apple, you know, we like creative math. So we're giving you 10 um, strategies, but they all go together here. So how do you help your students become managers of the project? Well, one great way to do that is to use um, planning logs. And I have, um, I believe they're called work logs here in the downloadable resource there. And basically they are their project management tools to help them keep track of the different parts of the project they need to get done, who's being assigned those different parts, and when they're due. And so there's a group work plan. There's also an individual work plan. And one other thing too uh, to keep in mind, it's always good to have the students reflect on that process, right? And maybe that they do that daily um, with a quick question, or they do that weekly in something maybe a little bit more structured. So I have an example there of that, it says my goals. And have students write out, okay, what are their goals maybe for that day or for that week in regards to their project, for their uh, particular part of the project. And then they reflect on what they accomplished. And what were the mistakes? We call them my wonderful mistakes. Let's celebrate them. What are those, those mistakes that I made along the way? And what did I learn? What did I learn from them? And what are, what are my next steps? And again, this could be written down in a journal. It could be written down on a, on a handout or sheet like this electronically. Or they could do that in strategy number nine, a video update. 
maybe the students are sharing a, a video, a through Flipgrid with you, of how, where they're at on their project plan. Maybe you have a progress bar across your classroom of the different points you've de decided or determined as a class of the project, and the students are kind of moving themselves through that progress plan. Um, and the last strategy is, is just um, as you're walking around the classroom, as the students are engaging and working collaboratively in the project, they have their assigned roles, is to check in with them. And just scheduling you know, five minutes, and maybe you can't get to every group each day, but just knowing that the next time you get to the other, other group members, just to check in, you know, giving them that feedback, using some feedback strategies, um, checking their progress, making sure everyone is, is where they need to be. They have a, a clear plan as well. One thing I did read from a blog, and I believe it was A.J. Giuliani, great person to, to follow, too, if you're in Twitter uh, or social media. Um, he wrote the book, Launch, and um, it's all about design thinking. Um, but one thing that he really stresses is just the, the power of those one-on-one those -on -one conferences and you know taking that, that time to do that with your students as much as you can. All right, so with that, we are going to put up a poll that uh, lists all those different strategies of how to PBL um, like a boss. And just curious to find out which of the strategies might you like to try? And are there any other um, strategies that you'd like to share um, there as well? Um, uh, Chrissy, I just saw that cultural slideshow. I love that idea. That's awesome. There's a book uh, I'm just reading. It's called Edu Protocols, and one of their uh, protocols is like using Google Slides, but only you know, giving students each one slide and the topic. And basically, it becomes this like one-minute presentation of all the students' slides they go through. I love it. I love this cultural slideshow. The individual conferencing. I love it, Nicole. What's um What's Daily Five? I'm not too familiar with that. If you get a chance to to type that in. Uh, oh, yes, Carrie. So um, actually, we can change the screen. Robin, if you don't mind changing the screen. And we've got the download resources. So you can see those downloaded resources there that work logs. So all of those team, individual, and that, that goal kind of reflection, that's all in that document. Also included um, the couple of the projects I highlighted today, the project overviews, if you're interested in those as well. And um, I threw in there the uh, Blue Apple fundraiser ideas. So a lot of our PBL projects, uh, we also include uh, fundraisers. We have the students plan a fundraiser. That's another great uh, project management opportunity for students. Uh, and so we came up with some creative ideas to help kind of get the juices flowing for some of those as well. Oh, Nicole, thank you so much for that information. I'm definitely going to have to take a look at that. I love it. All right. I love the idea of the parent night. You know, that's that authentic audience, you know, for that cultural slideshow. Excellent. Thank you. All right. I know we are over time, and I'm so sorry about that. Thank you so much for the great conversation. I'm going to turn things over real quickly to Robin, and I hope to see you guys here next month. Thanks, Don. Um, so as Don referenced our Blue Apple project, which is an awesome way to get started or to continue using PBL in your class. So in the web links box on your screen, there is a link to the Blue Apple website, which is blueappleteacher.org. So definitely check that out. And then also join us for our next webinar. It's on November 20th, and we'll talk about how to create a successful PBL culture in your classroom. So you can link to that registration page from the web links box as well. So thank you guys all again for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again next month. Have a great night. Awesome. Bye.